Drawing is part of my life. Drawing is the most important tool of the architect. The computer is an important gadget, but to draw, you can pull something from something in a drawing that a computer or any sort of a tool will never give you. This man is Lloyd Rees, one of our great landscape painters, my drawing teacher at university for five years, one full day every week at university for five years, and 30 years of students he taught. And he taught us to love to draw. He didn't teach us classically. He taught us to love to draw. And if you can teach a student to love something, inspire them to love something, then they do all the work. This is Lloyd Rees very shortly before he died. And he was sitting quietly in his chair. And I pulled out my sketchbook and I drew him. Now, how do I change this? This one here, that one. New Zealand, Australia, my life, water. I'm a water man. Land too, but I'm water-based. Our whole family is water-based. Our whole community is water-based. We have no roads where we live. We have boats, ferries, water taxis, but water. What a magical, wonderful current of life is water. It's thick. We should never lose sight of the fact of the thickness of water. If you're designing boats, you have to understand that water is hard to part, to get it apart, and closes on itself very easily. So you can have a double-ended boat that's fine in its entry, comes out fat like a duck, and comes into the stern and climps off, and it will be super efficient. That's what the Scandinavians understood. Water is wonderful and thick. Boats, early form of boats. <laughs> Pretty good though, isn't it? Uh, look at this. This is an old boat. This is a thousand years old, this boat but it is as modern as you would like. Look at the construction system, lightweight. And you look at these two prows coming out and you say, oh, that must be for the shape of the hull going through the water. Well, actually, you could turn it over and carry it away with those. That's why they were there. Again, these boats are the best power form of craft that has ever been designed, double-ended. This man, great influence on me and a whole generation, probably many of you here too, Manfred Curry, great sailor, at 16 wrote the best book on aerodynamics of sail from Göttingen University and won all the regattas and was very modest about his performance and he says, in spite of winning 753 regattas, I feel my racing, tactic, racing tactics can never be improved upon. <laughs> He was fantastic. But he was, he was Benny Lexon's hero, and he was our hero. And he would have been Bruce Farr's hero. And these are things from his books. He took nature, and he looked very carefully, and he saw all the principles at work. This ice flow, if you can see it, is the perfect hydrodynamic shape. And he took the measurements from it. And these are some of the boats he made. 1920s, nearly 100 years old, this boat. Rounded gunnels, aerofoil systems, so modern. These are the things, as an architect and interested in boats, that really drive me and many other people as well. And in New Zealand, you are particularly good at it. So that's a great thing that we all have in common. Related to water and work with Sydney has been work on Sydney Harbour with my great friend Rob Simpson. And we have belted the New South Wales government for 15 years to get them to change all the industrial sites up Sydney Harbour into small port towns, reinvigorate the ferry system, 
and give us back a genuine maritime city. Out of 48 giant industrial sites, we won three. But that's the nature of Sydney Harbour. Points, bays, points, bays. If you understand the structure of a landscape, you know how to make the reweaving of things within it. And that's, that's, the, that's the system of transport in Sydney. The top road is the road along the ridge. That's the old Aboriginal tracks. These roads, the trunk roads of Sydney, are the oldest roads on earth. Underneath all of our trunk roads are the old Aboriginal tracks. And then they led down the spurs, like down the fingers, like that. And on the end where the orange is is where the industrial sites were. So it just makes such sense then to change them into port towns with studios, housing, you know. And this again is Sydney Harbour reinvigorated. I just want to show you these things because I'm just not a maker of dinky houses. And this is what happened around Sydney. These fantastic sites were just destroyed. And they are now key card operating housing with the Chardonnay set up there and um, a great loss for our city. People have a lot of trouble to understand that older buildings, even they've got industrial background, you can reweave the new things through it and give them new life. I'm sure you have similar issues here. <laughs>